Hello, hello everybody. Good morning and welcome to day three of National Apprenticeship Week. Um, my name is Heather Reynolds from Career Map, and I'll be your host for the next hour or so. Uh, today, I'm joined from the team from DNS, who are here to tell you all about the apprenticeship roles that they have, and they'll also be sharing their own experiences at as, as an apprentice and apprentices at the organisation of what we teach them. Um, this is a session which is very open to, to questions and answers, so please ask any of your questions in the chat box on the right hand side. Um, what will happen is after the presentation is finished, um, I will collate the questions and, and pose them to the team and they'll answer them for you. Um, please also note that this session has been recorded, so don't fret about missing anything. Uh, as you can see already, there's a QR code on the screen where you'll be able to go into the website and find out any specific information. But anything that we'll be speaking about today is being recorded and we'll send the link to you via email. So I think without any further ado, it's my opportunity to disappear off the screen, um, hand over to the team and I'll see you on the other side for the Q&As. Thanks, Heather. Hi, everyone. So my name's Natalie. I'm the marketing manager for DNS, specifically our apprenticeship and graduate schemes. Today, I'll be talking you through who we are, what we're about, what we can offer you, and then opening up the floor to questions for you. We have three lovely apprentices here who can answer your questions about their experience and life on one of our apprenticeships. And we'll stop for questions at the end. So please, as Heather mentioned, pop your questions into the sidebar and we'll aim to answer them. So who are we? As I mentioned, I'm Natalie. I'm responsible for the marketing for the DNS Apprenticeship and Graduate Schemes. We've also got Christina, Ryan and Molly on the call. They're real apprentices currently on our apprenticeship schemes. So DNS, you might not have heard of us before. We're Defence Equipment and Support. That's why we call ourselves DNS for short. We're here to protect and provide for the UK armed forces all over the world. We procure and maintain the newest protective equipment for those on the front line. We do things like provide smarter tech for radar systems, safer vehicles for land, sea and air. And we ensure that every individual in the UK military is fully equipped and protected as they protect life both at home and at seas. Across specialisms, across specialisms from engineering to HR, our people push for the best every day and they lead their way in their field. And why? Because it helps keep our nation safe and that's what drives us. Where are we based? Well, we're based mainly in Bristol, but we have locations across the nation and world on all sorts of military bases and offices and with our partners. There are about 12,000 people currently working for DNS, and currently within that, there are over 300 apprentices that we take on. These apprentices are based in engineering, digital technology, finance and accounting, corporate services, project professional, which is a mix of project controls, so scheduling risk, project controls management and project management itself. We have a few schemes open now and we have more opening over the next few months. So right now is the key time to apply if you're interested. I have got a QR code on the side of the screen. Please scan that. It will take you directly to our website page where you'll be able to see all of the different schemes that we offer, the ones that are open right now, the ones that are coming out soon, and you'll be able to find out a little bit more about our schemes there. So now I'll move on to describing the schemes and what's in it for you. We're quite a good organization. I've worked here now. We have a range of benefits. We have things like flexible working, so you can fit your work in with your lifestyle. You can start a variety of hours during the day, obviously agreeing that with your team at the time based on business need, but it's quite flexible. I know people that have started at 7 a.m. in the morning and finished by three. Other people prefer to start at half nine and finish at half five. It genuinely is flexible working here. We offer 25 days holiday a year, and we increase that every day, every year, sorry, by one day, up to 30 days after five years. Um, we also offer a competitive package um, of items, including two generous civil service pension options, which are quite good for preparing for later life. We have on our Abbey Wood site, which is based in Bristol, we have an on-site gym, a number of restaurants and cafes, and a costa on site so that's pretty cool. Uh, we have a huge variety through our government work of high street discounts and savings that we can offer you through a defence discount card which is always handy to use and that includes not only high street shops actually thinking about it but also restaurants. 
We also offer, depending on the scheme and depending on the team you're in and business need, a range of national and international opportunities. Some of our apprentices have travelled the world. They've gone to the Falkland Islands, all sorts of interesting places, COVID permitting, obviously. The last couple of years have made it a little bit difficult for travel. Uh, but there are plenty of opportunities to travel the world with DNS. And the, probably the biggest benefit of our apprenticeship schemes is once you successfully complete the scheme, we'll offer you a permanent role within the organisation. And Christina, actually, on the line, is currently gearing up to that point. So if you have any questions about the end of scheme, please direct them to us because we'll be able to answer them. OK, so a little bit about why our apprenticeships. Our schemes have a really high success rate and many of our apprentices have actually climbed the ladder following their apprenticeship scheme here and moved up to senior levels within the organisation. There are certain schemes that have been going for many, many years, especially particularly the finance and accounting apprenticeship. There's a whole long line of people that have climbed the organisation after finishing. We offer also plenty of support. We have a dedicated management team, which is quite unique for apprenticeship schemes. There's a group of people that are dedicated to helping manage all of the apprentices and graduates that are on our schemes across the business. You will have a dedicated scheme manager within that who will act as a line manager and help support you. As part of this, we offer tailored training. So we're quite flexible based on what your aspirations are and what you want to gain and what you like and what your skills are based in. And we can tailor the scheme and your placements based on that. So that's a really interesting and quite unique benefit of working for us. And also the last benefit that I have written down here is that many of our schemes allow for work experience with other businesses because we have a number of partners you may have heard of, such as Rolls-Royce and other engineering, Airbus, people like that. We work quite closely with them. So there are a number of schemes, particularly within engineering, that allow you to work really closely and sometimes within their offices. So that's also a benefit. OK, so that's a little bit about us. But what have DNS done recently that's impressive that you might have heard of? So because we're a government organisation, we have a number of resources that we can use for emergency situations. The most recent, obviously, being COVID-19. We jumped in on the COVID-19 response operations and many of our apprentices went on to help set up the Nightingale hospitals. They went to help support PPE and hospital equipment distribution because we are at heart a procurement agency. We, we help buy and source different types of equipment. And because of that, we had the strong skill set to help in the COVID-19 um, arena. We recently had an apprentice go and help support on the vaccination effort just before Christmas as well. So there's a whole range of opportunities that you can get involved in at DNS. OK, so that's a bit about us. Again, just to reiterate, please scan the QR code on the right because more detail will be there. You can have a look at all of your schemes and see which ones you're interested in. All of the salary information will be on there. It varies per scheme. We have a number of schemes that are available, so I can't give out exact details because it does range from, I think, the lowest around 17,000 to 21,000 or so, depending. So all of the information you'll find on our website and the links to apply. So that's a bit about us, basically. And we wanted to hand over to you now. The purpose of this session was quite informal. We want to hear from you and have, give you the opportunity to ask questions about us. So we have Molly and Ryan here who are on the Corporate Services Degree Apprenticeship, which on their year was called the Chartered Management Degree Apprenticeship, but now this year applying will be the Corporate Services Degree Apprenticeship. We also have Christina, who's on the Engineering Advanced Apprenticeship and coming up to the end of her journey here. So that is everything that I wanted to run through. Heather, if we had any questions come through? Yeah, sure. Um, I think what would be um, nice to hear actually from each of the apprentices before we dive into the questions um, would be just to hear a little bit about their own experience. So um, what they what their background is so what they did before the apprenticeship and what the and what brought them to where they are now because I think that that can help give um some context to the answers and also Pete I'm sure people have some more specific questions around that and maybe they can see themselves in their shoes too um so yeah if you don't mind just kind of rolling the question out between the three of you that would be brilliant yeah um hi all my name is Ryan um so before I did this apprenticeship, I actually started as in co-op. Um, I was doing that part-time. Um, I was actually a part-time supervisor 
and I was studying in UWE in Bristol. Um, unfortunately, because of the COVID incident, uh, a lot of stuff happened and it kind of went downhill from there. Um, after that, I did many jobs doing labor and construction, uh, doing obviously warehouse assistance as well. Um, and then funny enough, my auntie works in the DNS and MOD as well. And she sent me an amazing job opportunity because I am very good with my brain and uh, like, I can't stand like doing construction and stuff really. It was just to make a bit of money. And when I was reading through the description online, it just felt right for me. It just felt that like I can actually challenge myself and put myself in a position where I can progress through the years and actually improve myself uh, effectively. But it is an opportunity that all of you should be able to take. And it is an amazing job role for that. All of you will apply for Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so I'm Christina and I'm currently an engineering advanced apprentice. Um, so my background is I, I left, uh, finished GCSEs and I went to do A-levels and I did a year of A-levels. Um, and I honestly, I really wasn't enjoying it because I really wanted to apply myself in a more practical manner, but also, you know, gain qualifications at the same time. So I applied for the engineering apprenticeship at DNS, and I'll I see some questions in the chat about that. So we'll reply to those later. Um, and since then, I've been in the business for coming up to three years now. Like Natalie said, I'll be regrading soon. Um, I've worked in artillery systems, uh, in land equipment. I've worked in Type 23 frigates, which is in ships. Uh, and currently I'm working for the Wildcat delivery team. And I work with Leonardo at the moment, who are obviously a separate company to DNS. Um, and so, yeah, I work with helicopters now and I've experienced every domain. So it's a really great opportunity, these apprenticeships, especially engineering. But I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's brilliant. Uh, hello, my name is Molly. Uh, just a bit about me, so I'm obviously on the Charter Management Degree Apprenticeship. I came straight from A-Levels, so I finished my A-Levels last May, I think, um, and then applied. I know I didn't want to go to uni because I didn't want to, like, um, I just didn't want to go straight into a degree. I wanted to keep working and getting the practical skills. Um, so I applied for quite a few apprenticeships and managed to get this one um which is really good i started off thinking i wanted to do law somehow that led me to business management not really sure how but there we go um i only have really experience in working at like tesco and other retail places so it's not really like i had any experience of business management i was only like on the checkout so i didn't really have any experience but um the amount i've learned like literally in six months of being in the business is like amazing i've is that the practical and the academic learning of the degree as well it just combines really well and like I've already seen like so much progression and the um tasks that I'm like um completing with the my teams and stuff so yeah that's just about me brilliant that's really helpful um I'm going to do um pose some questions to you now from the chat um Natalie I suppose it's going to be best if you can just field out who might be best place to answer each one. Um, the first question that came through was um, what, what part of London is the DNS based in? But it's actually Bristol, isn't it? That is that is absolutely the case. Can anyone correct yeah. me if I'm wrong? Yes, yeah, so we're based in Bristol mainly. We do have a number of locations, but the majority of our apprenticeships are solely based in Bristol. And then if you move to a team that isn't a different part of the country, you would then get relocated. Okay, brilliant. Um, we asked, what is the training like and do you receive a lot of support? Well, I will actually field this over to you guys as apprentices because you'll be the best place to answer these questions. Um, Christina, you're right to talk through the support that you've received. Yeah, I'm happy to talk through it. So, well, in my experience, so uh, through the Engineering Advanced Apprentice Scheme, obviously you've got three outputs. So you've got your HNC, um, and you'll get support through that from the college. So with Bridgewater and Taunton College slash University Centre Somerset. So we'll get plenty of support from the tutors. Um, even we've got, a, you know, Teams chats set up, even though we do go in every few months into college for block release. So two weeks uh, where obviously you can have face to face uh, talks with the teachers and they support you through the HNC. Uh, in terms of MVQ, you have an assessor. Uh, and they set up your apprentice manager and assessor uh, will have regular meetings with you to ensure that 
you know, you're on the right track, you're set, you know, you're taking off the criteria as you go. Um, and then obviously work in terms of placements, you have a placement delivery manager and you can also have a mentor within your team um, or within another team just in the same function. Um, and they should, you know, help you through day to day, set up regular meetings sort of once a week, uh, depending on how new you are to the business. And, you know, again, it's it's also it goes both ways. You have to ask questions. Um, so, yeah, there's plenty of support in place. You just you need to utilize it because um, sometimes if you're a bit quiet, you know, you can get lost in it because it is it is a business at the end of the day and you do get checked up on. But you have to also put yourself out there. So but there's plenty, plenty of support networks. Brilliant. Um, Mike actually asked a very similar question. So, Mike, hopefully that answers that for you as well. Um, Natty, there's another question around um, how do the apprentices manage their workload and studies together? Oh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, that's a good question. Again, that's something that the apprentices will be best placed to answer alongside the support that we offer as a management team and we can give them. Um, Molly and Ryan, do you have any, you're studying a degree, aren't you, currently in London as part of it. How do you manage the balance between study and business? Um, um, I, yeah. can't per I can't speak personally for everyone, um, but you need to find that balance that you are going to be comfortable with. Um, so normally for me, it's eight till four every day. Um, well, Monday to Friday, um, within the time, you've got to do your tasks, got to do your jobs, that's essential. Um, but within like a half hour break or even 15 minutes, just study uh, when you have time. Um, I normally do eight till four and within a day, I do my job study. I go to the gym when I finish work and at, when I come back from the gym, I eat and then start studying again. I don't do that every day. Um, you do need to counterbalance your social life as well, which is very important because you don't want to be doing this and then gathering too much information, which is mostly a problem for what I've discussed with certain people that they just do it every day and they just overload or bring with so much information. Um, you just need to find, yeah, for yourself, just find that balance that you will go out with your mates, go meet them for a drink or cinema and then find that time, even on a Sunday, if you're not doing anything, just study for an hour, two hours, it, it's not gonna hurt. That's what I normally do. Molly, what do you do? Um, I was just going to say, I, I managed to fit all of my study and my work in work hours. So I usually do eight till four or like seven till three, depending on how much I want to get out of bed. Um, but I, yeah, so we do the degree with one virtual workshop, which is kind of like a lecture, but it's like more like a lesson every two weeks, um, throughout the term to like consolidate your learning. And then each week you do independent notes and like there's like a whole platform that like helps you with like videos and like explanations of what you need to be working on and what books you need to be reading what notes you need to be taking and things like that so it's really clear what um you need to be doing and then obviously my managers are really helpful they give me a lot of time to get on with the work that I need to get on with and like if I'm struggling I can just say to them that I need an extra day like can I take give you your task back and can I get on with my uni work because I'm like, a bit behind. Um, so I don't actually do any uni studying outside of um, my work hours. I don't do any when I get home like from the office. I don't do any on a weekend because I just fit it all in around my um, my work at, in the hours. So, yeah, I find the uh, life balance is pretty fine, to be fair, because I managed to fit it all in. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Brilliant. Those are great answers. Thank you. Um, it leads me on quite nicely um, to the next question that is from Tom, and he's asking what the culture is like. Can you just give us a bit of a snapshot on what life at the, the D, at DNS is? Yeah, of course. Um, I'll, I'll take this one and then pass it over to you guys to see if there are any other points that you want to make. But there's quite a unique culture at DNS because we're linked to the Ministry of Defence and because of that we tend to have quite a high population of military professionals coming and working either on site for the day, visiting or they transfer and do a placement themselves at DNS. So it's quite an interesting culture in that sense. Uh, um, they've had to work quite hard to modernise it from that traditional military atmosphere and there's still some of that left now. Um, it, it varies depending on team. Again, I mentioned earlier that there are 
tw roughly 12,000, 11,500 people that work for us. So the amount of teams that there are within the organization range vastly. And you could get one team where the culture is really laid back and flexible. And you could get one another team that's really busy and fast paced and you're constantly working. And again, it depends on the project type as well. We're, we're based around mainly projects. So you can get much longer projects. So for example, a ship or an airplane or one of those larger pieces of equipment that can take sometimes 20 years to de to develop and get that airplane out into service flying. So that will typically, I've found anyway, in my experience, be quite a relaxed and slow paced environment with lots and lots of people working on different areas that are specialists in wings or the wheels or the brake system. Whereas I've also worked in a project environment with very small, fast paced projects. So we deliver the projects within a year. And that was you were always busy, always having to manage the next priority. So it really does range. And with our apprenticeship schemes, you would rotate around a number of different business areas. So you could one placement find yourself in a slightly slower project that won't be delivered for 20, 15 years. Or you could be working and actually see a small project come to life. I don't know if Christina, you have any anything else you wanted to add based on your experience, because I know you've rotated around a different number of areas, haven't you? Yeah, so um, yeah, I've rotated around a few areas. I've been on a concept project. Again, that was a project that's I think 2026 is when it's going to be released. Can't really talk about it. But yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, type 23, I worked that was in service equipment. So that's a lot more practical in terms of you're dealing with current issues that the military are facing, um, just like I dealt with a kind of software update for the stability software and just various things. Um, there's so much going on. And now in Wildcat, um, I deal with obviously the in-service aspect, but also, uh, you know, upgrades uh, and modifications to kind of keep up with the current climates uh, per se. So there's a, there's just so much to get involved with and there's so many different projects. Like honestly, I'm part of me is going to miss being on the apprentice scheme because, you know, you rotate around. Um, and not that you can't do that when you enter the business, um, but it's, it's just something really nice because you get exposed to such a diverse engineering field. Brilliant. Um, thank you. We've got um, some questions about um, eligibility and so on, which I think, Natalie, I'll direct at you first, and I think you might be able to answer them or field them out um, as you feel uh, necessary. But Nick asked, um, is there a driving licence uh, required? No, not as far as I'm aware. No, there's no driving licence requirement. I don't think there are any roles that we offer apprenticeships in that would require you to be driving. Uh, there are obviously a, a number of bases around the UK that you would be visiting on your apprenticeship scheme occasionally. So if you do have a driving license, then we have the opportunity for you to take on a hire car and drive around and get there that way. But then there's also plenty of public transport. And typically you tend to work in teams where multiple of you are going at the same time. So it wouldn't be necessary for you to drive yourself to a military base. You could go with the team or get public transport. So. In short, sorry, that was a long-winded answer. No, <laughs> no, there is no requirement for a driving licence. Brilliant. Um, Nick also asked, is the engineering apprentice at degree level? So we have a number of engineering apprenticeships. We have the engineering advanced apprenticeship, which Christina is on here on this call. And then we also have the engineering degree apprenticeship, and that is... Uh, degree you get I think there are three two new specialisms on that this year off the top of my head it is aerospace and electrical and mechanical are the three specialisms so you would get a specialist degree and work experience within those specialisms there um, and then there is also linked to engineering a digital technology degree apprenticeship so again just if you're interested in cyber or software security that's also a degree one brilliant um, thank you. There was an interesting question here about, um, do you accept experience in the armed forces in lieu of academic qualifications for the degree apprenticeship? Well, that's, that's a really good question, yeah. an interesting one. And myself not being in the specific recruitment team, I wouldn't be able to give you a definite answer. But what I would suggest is looking at our website and then there are applications currently open. Once you see the link go live there, there is a recruitment contact within the job adverts on the, you, you'll go through to a website called civil service jobs, which is the main government recruitment advert website. 
And at the bottom of that advert, there will be Ben True Scott Owen and an email for him. So if you pop him an email, I'm sure he would be best placed to answer that question. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, Hope asked, um, what kind of apprenticeships have, have you got there? So obviously on the call here, we've got um, Molly and Ryan who are doing chartered management and Christine who's doing engineering. What other um, types of roles are included within the apprenticeships? Sorry, is it, um, just to understand that myself, do you mean what other apprenticeship types there are? Yeah, as in, um, is it just, um, so Hope's question is, is it just engineering and apprenticeships or are there others? Ah, cool, thanks. Yeah, so there, there are a range of opportunities. We've got apprenticeship opportunities in finance and accounting. So it's not just engineering. There is a large proportion of our organisation that are engineers because of the nature of our work and the specialist requirements of that but we also have as I mentioned finance and accounting we have corporate services as Molly and Ryan are on as well we have project professionals so they do a mix of project management scheduling risk project controls management and I think we've got a few new schemes coming this year so keep an eye on our website but we add new schemes every year so no there are a range of opportunities based on what your interests and skill sets are and just because you do an apprenticeship in something and then imagine say you complete your apprenticeship and you spot somewhere else within the business there are we have hr roles and all these sorts of people focused roles too once you've regraded it's not that's not your career for life i'm a good example of that i started off in this organization as a project controller so i was doing risk management and i found i really enjoyed the people side so a couple of years ago i transferred over to marketing and communications i'm now in a totally different function the world really is your oyster with this organization obviously it's based on business need as well but there are so many different roles and also you could be just because there is an apprenticeship in finance and accounting because of the vast majority of teams are so different and the different equipment we manage each role can be different too so yeah lots of opportunities here and and what does the future hold obviously if you um you know you're speaking about your your own experience where you've got a length of time at the organization but I think it'd be helpful for people to know, are you guaranteed a role after the apprenticeship? What happens after it's finished? So I will pass over to Christina in a second, but it depends on the apprenticeship itself. And it also depends on you successfully com completing the apprenticeship. If you successfully complete the apprenticeship, everyone I've known has gone on to be replaced and regraded with the new organization as a definite. But obviously there are people that necessarily haven't passed the apprenticeship and then obviously it can't you can't carry on then into a role after that. Christina, you're actually leading up to the end of your apprenticeship. Do you have any insight on the experience that you've had with finding and regrading? Yeah, one point to add on to the end of that is um, I know in the past there's been some people who take a little longer to complete the apprenticeship. There can be, you know, small extensions given obviously under circumstances. Um, but yeah, in, in my experience, it there's been no type of, oh, you're finishing the apprenticeship and there's no kind of you need to apply for a job now. It's a very f continuous process. So as far as I know, I am going to have a suitability interview in July. And yeah, from there, obviously, if I say if I pass it, it's it's quite guaranteed, really. But it just kind of. I'll be presenting the work I've done over the last few years, how I'm going to benefit the business uh, and such. And yeah, then I'll just go into a level one engineering role. Uh, and then usually within about a year, you you can promote to level two. That's quite common, obviously, if you're good at your job um, and you know, you're keen to work. One of the big things is being keen to learn uh, and develop because they love that. But yeah, it's a flowing process, really. Brilliant, thank you. And this is a question for each one of the apprentices. And I think, Christine, if we can just hold on to you and, and come to you first. Um, what is the most interesting project you worked on? Um, and I, I suppose I'm not sure whether you can even really talk about them, but maybe in code. Um, and what difficulties have you faced as an apprentice at the start of your journey? So, um most interesting project I've worked on like you said can't say a couple but um, when I was working in ships I massively enjoyed it um, I even went to so HMS Monmouth which is one of our type 23s uh, it's being decommissioned so I was part of that process um, doing something called return to stores so 
basically removing equipment to use on other ships. So that was really fun. I actually got my hands dirty uh, in my PPE. So that was brilliant. Any opportunity to get like that is really great. Um, and then what was the other part of the question? Sorry, got carried away. <laughs> um, and what difficulties did you face um, at the beginning of your apprenticeship? Yeah, so obviously entering the business, uh, it can be not daunting, but there's a lot of acronyms that are used very commonly uh, in DNS, and that goes for any other function. Um, but, you know, it's just getting used to terminology um, and, you know, getting to know the team. There, there's nothing, honestly, too intimidating. And I, I wouldn't say I found things difficult. Um, but, yeah, it's just kind of getting into the culture. But also, as mentioned earlier, uh, getting that kind of work-life study balance between your apprenticeship because it's the probably more difficult on an apprenticeship than when you actually regrade because you're managing a lot of things at once and it's actually a really good experience in that way. Brilliant, thanks Christina. Uh, Molly and Ryan, your thoughts? Um, well, I've not been there as long as um, Christina obviously has. I've only been here about six months but um, in terms of the project I've been working on, I work in corporate reporting, so I'm not directly on like um, a project creating like a ship or a tank. I actually report on like how those projects are moving forward and like how much money they're spending, etc. So um, probably not as exciting what, as what Christine has done, but um, I think what is interesting for me is that I'm responsible for outputs that go out to the whole business, and I'm literally 19. And I feel like that's quite a big achievement to have started doing like um, six months into the apprenticeship. And I also provide di uh, direct work for the CEO. So I'm already being exposed to like such high senior management and I'm literally like so new to the business and I'm so young. I feel like it's a really interesting thing to be doing. Um, and difficulties, I think it was probably integrating into work. I mean, I came straight from school. I came straight from A-levels. So like, it's a very different place being in a school to being in a business, but I feel like everyone was so welcoming and so friendly. Like it was a very like smooth transition uh, starting in the business. I would say as well, uni was a bit of an adjustment from coming straight from A levels. Like um, the way you write and the way you learn is a bit different. You don't have the teachers, teachers like always like on your back about stuff. But now that I'm six months in, I literally feel completely fine with everything. Like. Yeah, it's been such a progression from the start of the apprenticeship. So, yeah, I'm happy with everything now. Brilliant. That's a really good answer. Thank you. And Ryan, what are your thoughts? Um, at the moment, I haven't worked on anything interesting as of yet. Um, but I think inter what's interesting for me is while working in my placement, is that I get to speak to a wide range of people and from different teams and different projects and stuff and what they do and it kind of gives me an insight of what they do and how I can use that to progress further in future agendas, my career, my apprenticeship, my assignments such as. Um, but the difficulties is probably I do agree with Christina is the terminology with the acronyms um, as well as uh, coming back originally it was the balance in my life uh, because I've had after work and stuff when I was doing originally my original jobs it was sports um seeing family and such as which I can still do but it took me a good month to kind of find that right balance for me which I can do that all in because this is really important and obviously so is family and obviously having a social life but that was a very difficult thing for me to say oh I can't come tonight but I could do it then but then you know yeah such as brilliant Thank you. Um, there's an interesting question here, which is definitely relevant for everybody here, um, Natalie and the apprentices alike. Um, and I think you'll all have a different take on it. But um, there's been a question around um, what is the assessment centre like and can you give any tips on how to stand out? So from my perspective, I can talk about the team. So the assessment centre varies depending on the scheme. I think some of them require just an interview type process and others will want more technical skills. So the engineering ones are quite keen, obviously, on assessing your technical skills and things like that. And COVID, it's changed. Sometimes it's been hosted virtually online through the college and then it has previously also been physical. So it, it really varies. 
Um, and I've never been to one myself yet in this role. So I'll pass over to the apprentices to talk about their assessment process and what that was like, and also their tips. So, um, oh, from my side, the tips show proactiveness, willingness to learn, the classic things, positivity. Yeah, and basically the willingness to adapt and change and grow, because that's what an apprenticeship is all about. It's about learning and growing and getting that experience that helps you develop. Brilliant. Thanks, Natalie. Christina, do you want to go take the lead on this one? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, again, uh, quite lucky in the engineering terms because our assessment centre was, I found it quite fun, to be honest. Um, but the first step was, you know, you had, we had to go into Bridgewater College in Taunton um, and we had to do a exam on the computer. It was mechanical principles maths and English I believe it was a little while ago um, and then once you pass that uh, you'd go on to it's like a team building type exercise um, so we went to again Bridgewater College but at Cannington um, and we were put into groups and we did sort of you know the typical A-frame building to you know crossing a little body of water and you know various sort of go cast <laughs> it was quite fun actually I don't know how it is now but I loved it um tip one don't be that uh person who tries to take over everything and talks over everyone else because that is not good uh really not good uh you know show team building show again like Natalie said proactivity because it gets you everywhere um and just show you know willingness willingness to improve um and listen to others and it's just you know be an be a good individual you know it's quite self-explanatory brilliant thank you molly and ryan i guess it's a little um less far away for you to kind of reach from the archives um yeah what was your experience of the assessment center and what what kind of tips would you give to anybody who's here thinking this sounds great but oh my life what would what would it involve um we um, didn't actually do the assessment trial center we did like a um we did a practice run, um, but the the task that we had to do was very interesting and very engaging. Um, my words of advice is just be yourself. Um, that's what they're looking for. It's just how you how you will be within different scenarios. Um, they just want to see how you are in general. I don't think that people you shouldn't really be nervous or stressed out. Just be yourself. There are going to be new people around you. You can probably learn off them as well and different techniques and stuff. So, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, I was just going to say, so when we did ours, we, because it was in COVID, we did an application, you know, like the first uh, step you go through, submit your CV and stuff. And then I only had a phone call interview, so I actually didn't do an assessment centre. So you kind of had to like project your, you know, like how you are through a phone call. You couldn't even do it like, you know, they couldn't even see you. So um, in terms of the interview section, because I know if you do an assessment centre, you still do an interview as well as part of the day. Um, yourself, like, as much as you can. Like, when I was doing my interview, I just made little jokes here and there. Like, I tried to be, like, relatable to the um, people that were interviewing me. Like, they were really nice. We ended up laughing for, like, a lot of our interview. Like, just making them show, like, show who you actually are. Don't be, like, so focused on, oh, I need to, like, show how good I am at this and good at that like they like to hear who you are as a person as well as like your qualifications and like what experiences you've got it's good to engage with the people rather than just be like a list of like all the things you can do because they'll see what you can do through how you interact with them and how you communicate with them about what you're talking about so yeah that's that's how I approach the interview so yeah it's, it's not scary though that's really helpful awesome. go on sorry sorry Point. Um, a really big thing that, again I've learned over a couple of years um, is you know find what your unique selling point is you know again be yourself um, and if there's any kind of interesting things about you not necessarily work experience but like <laughs> were you a nerd at school what kind of activities did you get involved in like there's just so so many things you can talk about aside from listing off you know your qualifications so yeah and even things, like, we've we've done sessions before when this kind of question has come up and there's been things like around you know family and responsibilities with maybe you know um helping um uh, with younger siblings and so on all that kind of make up 
um, that kind of tapestry of, of who you are and responsibility and, and dedication. And or I think sometimes there's a misconception that it needs to be purely professional. And of course, there is that element. But exactly what you're seeing here, there's lots of different parts of your own life that people might think, well, that's not relevant or everybody does that. A, it is relevant a lot of the time and B, not everybody does do it. And it's how, it, you know, we speak about transferable skills as well. There are parts of you know your life that you can bring into something like this and show the more human side um so yeah that's great um right it's going a little bit quiet on the questions and i will just say we've had a question from sarah asking about opportunities in north yorkshire we have covered um the locations earlier on in the session and what i would say to sarah um is that this will be well this is being recorded and the session will be emailed to you so you'll be able to hear about everything in terms of where everything is but also use the qr code here to go onto the website and have a look at locations um, and harry it's the same as uh, as well um we spoke about um what the apprentices will progress to do when we spoke about the journeys of, of everybody on here so i have a little rewind back when you get the box but there is a um a, a couple of questions here i think would be quite handy to kind of begin to wrap up the session with and i would press anybody who's sat at home or at college or wherever you are who's maybe sat on their hands thinking i really want to ask a question but i'm just not we'll go and we've got a few more minutes left to get through everything so um nick asks what kind of support or initiatives do you have around supporting um um uh, bame applicants so we we run within the organization we run a number of diversity networks and initiatives um, we, we want to encourage and support an inclusive culture, basically. They're designed to meet the needs of employees, regardless of race, religion, gender, marital status, sexual orientation, disability, anything or any dimension of diversity. We've got a number of networks, including the Pride Network. We've got a race and culture network. We've got a neuro inclusivity network. We've also got a young defense network for the Southwest and a women's network and a Christians network. And there may be others that I'm missing, um, but we've got a whole range of support initiatives and outreach programs that help promote diversity and support you and anyone of a diverse nature. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and I think this might be the perfect question to round everything up with. Um, and I will pose it to Christina, Molly and Ryan. And it is what made you choose the, the death um, so desk over the other companies offering apprenticeships? So uh, what made me choose it is well, I've always been armed forces oriented. When I left school, I wanted to join the army. Um, and yeah, I had to have an operation on my kidney. So unfortunately that didn't go too well. Um, so, you know, finding DNS, uh, obviously having such a close connection with the armed forces, it's really brilliant. Um, and obviously, yeah, you've got Rolls Royce, you've got BAE. I know they offer apprenticeships. Um, but for me, you know, working alongside the military every day, like my team, um, 50 60 percent of the staff are, are military current serving and they're really great guys um and yeah it, it's just such a close connection with the armed forces and that for me that's that's why i love it brilliant thank you um for me it was reading the application online um i read through a lot of them but the dns seemed to be it's like it just seemed to be me um and as well as that when I was reading the MBD kind of thing, I think there was more, so much more bonuses and benefits to being in a DNS, like who you speak to and how you can actually progress through the years. There is so much, I think there's actually a lot more opportunities that you can do in a DNS and the MOD. I might not be 100% sure on that, but what I've read up so far, that is true in my eyes, but. Brilliant. Um, Molly? Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, sorry. Um, basically, I, so I said it before I started off looking at law, that didn't really go very well too far, but <laughs> I moved on to business somehow. And um, I chose this scheme through, I did a mentoring scheme through my school because I, my school is very close to um, the Bristol Abbey Wood site. So I, um, I kind of learned about it more through there. And like, I had a buddy that was there who like helped me look with my CV and like helped me learn more about the business. And I just, I thought it was a good opportunity to like progress and learn. I feel like it's got a lot, of, a lot of opportunities. I know 
some of the other businesses I applied for just really didn't have the sort of progression pathways that the MD seems to um, have. Like now that I'm in this business, I can see how much like like drive and I have to like keep progressing but I know in the other businesses I applied for like it seemed to be this is your this is your role as an apprentice and that's that but they keep just working you and like seeing where you can learn and develop so yeah I feel like that's why I chose this apprenticeship. Brilliant and and actually Molly it's strange that you just mentioned school there because as we were just talking Susan James popped a question in the chat I'm um, not sure who's best place to answer this but she says do you do school visits um I can take a bit of this one before Natalie says but basically with my school and I know a lot of schools around Bristol because I've already got involved with this they do mentoring schemes where they help with CV right and they help with interview um, practice that's what they did with me they literally did interviews and they obviously know what they're looking for within the MOD so they were really helpful in that sense I've also helped out at apprenticeship events where people can come into um, the MOD building in Bristol and like look at all the equipment that we've got there and hear a bit more about um, like the different apprenticeships going on because I've that was in December I think so I know they run quite a few of those so they I'm not sure if they actually directly visit schools. That might have just been because of COVID, though. But I definitely know they do a lot of school engagement. You just have to look for it. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and the word COVID just got mentioned. And I think there's, that you've got a psychic power, Molly, because the question was just then asked around COVID. Slightly different stance on it. So I think I might pitch it to Natalie first. But um, Nick says, how has the company as a whole adapted and changed because of COVID? And how were the apprentices affected? And how did their work change? Well, I can talk from our support perspective and I'll probably pass over to the apprentices as well to get their take on what it was like on the receiving end of it. But we work didn't massively change when we went into lockdown because we basically rolled out a whole bunch of laptops and support equipment to our apprentices and all the staff working so that we were able to continue working. And as far as I'm aware, there weren't any periods where people could not work or were put on to the government system to help support them with income. Basically, things carried on as normal. We just now have a very much a hybrid working environment. Again, it depends on the team that you go into and across your placement. But you could be in a team that's 99 percent working from home. And there are also teams that are now mostly back in the office and then they only work from home one day a week. So it varies across the business. But we have that support available to continue working and continue networking and talking. We have a Skype system so that you can call people and chat and pop up to people. We have Microsoft Teams where you can call people. So basically, yeah, it didn't really much change, but I will pass over to Christina, Molly and Ryan who might be able to give their perspective on what it was like for you guys as apprentices with this hybrid working environment. I found it all right, to be fair. Um, it's actually, yeah, as you said, you know, we got our laptops, you know, it was just getting the initially setting it up and find out what we've got to do, how we're doing it. Because face-to-face -face is more engaging and, you know, you can be shown practical, but with face, well, online, I thought it was quite a little bit more difficult than it should have been, but that's just because that's just the nature of the job. Um, there is going to be stuff that you will find difficult and hard, but you will, you can do it. Everyone can do it. Um, but I would do. I would prefer go into the office and see people face to face because there's people that I would like to chat to, uh, but I can't um, because they are just absolutely busy all day. But if you ever get a chance to speak to them, you can. You could just walk because sometimes they will go into the office, and that will be an amazing opportunity for you to go up to them and actually get, ask them anything that you might be unsure of or what you want to do, and they can give you great advice about it. Um, but all in all, yeah, I found it easy to actually maintain my work life in my own office i got a home um with all the distractions i got a radio and such as so yeah my days actually go quite well during during the covid situation that's good to hear <laughs> um do you want me to answer it as well? yeah go for it if you can i, I don't know whether it, because you've been there about six months so you i suppose covid has been going on longer than your time there hasn't it well, yeah, so obviously I mentioned that because of the COVID situation, I had the interview on the phone 
And then when I first started, like the first induction week, we were in office. And then from September to December, before like it all got a bit dodgy with COVID, we were able to go into the office whenever we wanted. So I went in like two or three times a week, um, which was really nice because it got means I got to meet my team and like it was nice for the first few months that they were like right there with me and they were like showing me things um, like right in front of me. But then it's all, I find it fine working from home as well. I mean, I'm literally on my living room table right now. So it's not the best setup, but they provide you with all of the equipment that you need. And um, I'm pretty sure for free and like they'll help you with like getting all the cables and everything to make sure you can work from home. But I do know that people work from the, uh, uh the site the whole way through covid so it just depends on your situation and like how you feel you work best because my manager was like if you need to go in then that's fine and yeah i've started going back in um recently but i still think it's fine over the phone because like if you need someone you can just skype them straight away you don't have to like go and find where they are in the building you can literally just i, I just instant message people on skype and just be like oh can you call me quickly so it's it's really quick in that sense that you've got everything there like in one room you've got like all your files you've got your laptop and you've essentially got people because they can you can just call them straight away and you've got instant connection with them so yeah I think it's pretty good brilliant thank you that's really helpful um just oh Oh, sorry 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 to interrupt um just Molly made an excellent point there about some people didn't have to go home during COVID in the lockdown situation. And that was because of the support that's been put in place for mental health and support reasons. There has always been the caveat that they encourage working from home, obviously during lockdown when we were all encouraged to work from home from the government. But for if you had a not very nice situation at home or it wasn't practical for you or you just weren't happy there there was always the support available to enable you to come in if you needed to so that's also a good thing that we put in place brilliant thank you um just two more questions unless any there's any um late arrivals but um if just to recap for um those who are doing the the degree apprenticeships um uh, nick says how many days do you go into uni and how many work days do you work i know we've spoken about this but if you could just give a quick recap for anybody who missed it at the moment um it's two days every two weeks um so tuesdays and fridays are normally me and molly's scheduled days um so on the tuesdays it's nine till half past ten and then on fridays is normally uh, half past nine to half past four but the times do vary depending on how quickly they get through it um yeah brilliant thank you molly uh yeah so because we're on the same scheme it is the same but yeah. they're kind of they're not really lectures they're more like lessons it's very engaging you get put in breakout rooms so you can talk to different businesses about what you think on the specific topic we're learning that week so yeah in in a bit of background yeah it's very engaging even though like half nine to half four sounds really long it's actually not it's it's it really fun. interesting Brilliant. Thank you. Um, right then, Natty, I've got one final question for you before I think we wrap up the session. Edward asks, is being colourblind an issue? That's an interesting question to ask and not one that I would be an expert on. I, As far as I'm aware, it's not. my. So my partner works here as well and he's colourblind. So <laughs> that... Um, that's evidence enough that I don't think it affects it It might but I can't speak on behalf of the engineering apprenticeships that might require certain things from the design side and the equipment side and because the first two the first year especially in the engineering apprenticeships are quite practical so I don't want to speak on behalf of them when I'm not an expert on it Um, but I would recommend that scan the QR code on the side of the presentation here and find the recruitment contact because that will be the best place to go for specific questions like that. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I, I will say that more. there was someone on my scheme in the first year who was colorblind. Um, so we did stuff like turning, milling and welding uh, for, for my intake. Um, he he never had any issues, maybe an electrical, um, but there's there's nothing, you know, that that's going to harm you in any way. And that's the most important thing, as long as you're safe um, in terms of, you know, working in the business, uh, that you know, you're going to be your tasks are going to be allocated appropriately according to your 
your skills uh, and your development. So I, I don't see it as an issue. And like I said, I do have colleagues who are colorblind, who are engineers, and there aren't any issues, so. That's brilliant. It's something that can be discussed during the recruitment process as well. If you if you wanted to raise that quite early on, I'm sure they'd be willing to have a discussion with you about the impacts of it and whether there are any or not. Well, I think the bottom line here as well is don't let it impact you whether you make the decision to put through an application. Um, yeah. I think that's the answer. Brilliant. Yeah. OK, then, everybody. Well, look, um, it's, it's quite down on the questions now and there's only five minutes of the session left anyway so I think that um, I, I mean I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's joined in who's here on the panel of, and have answered the questions so brilliantly um, and everybody who's interacted as well and I think finally I just like to pass over to Natalie you know just to ask for a couple of parting words from you before we close off the session if that's okay. Yeah, no problem at all. And same from me. Thank you so much for dialing in and thank you for your questions. And thanks to our panel as well. Christina, Molly and Ryan, you've been great at answering the questions and being there. Basically, check out our QR code and website. That's the, what I would like to recommend to you guys. That's where we could put all of our up to date information. It's when we tell you that the schemes are going live. And if you're thinking about it, just apply, just go for it. What's the worst that can happen? I, I think every the we encourage applications from all backgrounds, all different diverse groups of people. Just, yeah, please apply. It, 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 we'd love to see you working here. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Right then, and I think on that note, it's my cue to end the session. Those are lovely um, words to end the session. Thank you again to everybody who's here. Um, good luck with whatever you continue to do. And like we said, the QR code host will hold all of your information and your recording of the session will be emailed to you. See you later. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.